What's up, guys? Here at Rap Sesh. Oh. Is this? My fingers aren't all the way in. Spirit fingers. <laughs> These are the rap glove fingers. Um, this week we are doing a lot of really fun little custom projects here in our print room. Um, we are working on some motorcycle tanks. We have some motorcycle helmets we're going to show you guys. Really fun little custom, kind of intricate projects that we like to do. Yeah. We like to do all the fun stuff that other people turn away. So um, today is the perfect example. This is probably our fourth wheelchair frame that we've wrapped. This is the frame of a wheelchair that we have all disassembled off of the chair already. Um, and we are wrapping it to this Oracle um, 970RA matte mint. Matte mint. Matte mint. Matte mint. Um, which is it's like also, a Tiffany blue kind yeah, of it's color. gonna match the owner's Tiffany blue um, Model X that we wrapped a yeah. few weeks ago. And the Tesla, his sister's Tesla. No, per Prius. Prius. He has a Tesla. He has a Tesla. She has she a has Prius. She has a Prius. If you guys have seen our last episode that we did when we did a Prius wrap surprise, he surprised his sister with a new car and a new wrap. It was really also fun. that too. We're doing the water bottle to and match. We're wrapping a water bottle. We're doing all sorts of weird things, okay? okay. That's what we're Every saying. Every once in a while, we have just we like random weird. projects. And a lot of people don't take on these projects. Like, there's a lot of shops here that I know of that don't even do this stuff because it's just, it's technical. Right. It takes time. Like, it's it's very tedious work. But that's what we like to do. And that's but I love we're doing this stuff. In. We're yeah. over wrappers. We do full coverage. We do crazy projects that take a lot of time. All of the projects here today are perfect examples of that. These helmets, the helmet design we have is a multi-layer design, like made by hand, three layers of film, um, and then the gas tank stuff, like all of that is just crazy intricate, and we really like to do that. Um, as well as our table. It's challenging. Our table, I keep bragging about our table. We upgraded the top, we got a really cool x-ray babe image from Guar Bonnet, and we got our new Yellow Tools cutting clear mat, which is really nice self-healing cutting mat that we now I have. I love this mat. So we'll it's give you guys nice a little pack. overhead view in a minute, but yeah, the the table is actually 3D. Yeah, it really is. We need 3D I, glasses. Yeah, I, I tried it with those ones, and the it's not open. It was by with my the, eye. <laughs> <laughs> with those ones over there, Stop. we have some <laughs> pointing at being everywhere. It's dangerous. If it was open. Okay. It's still by my eye. Sorry. Okay, anyways, so, we're gonna get started. Why don't you explain what you're doing with this? I gotta load some film and then we'll pull some pieces. Mm. Yeah? It's okay. okay. So, I got this wheelchair frame here. Nice little lightweight titanium frame, super cool. Um, I've done a couple wheelchairs in the past. Um, they're not too hard if you just you there it's just the most the most challenging part of these wheelchairs is finding places to seam the which is usually on the welds i use these welds actually as the seam and so once i'm done usually the welds kind of take away the seam because you, you you see the weld no matter what so as long as you take the seam right to each edge of that weld it pretty much disappears and then also what i do is i have to actually seam underneath so you have to you obviously have to put a seam somewhere it's a round bar and so i always have to just hide the seams on the back side here you can probably see a little bit of there kind of where where the seams are um but as long as when he's sitting down like this you're not going to see any seams you're not going to see it. it's going to look like a painted chair so it's, it's all about hiding your seams and pre-stretch because the reason why i say pre-stretch is because of these very hard angles here also here, you know, these, these crazy turns. If you don't have any pre-stretch on your film, it's not gonna wanna take these curves. Because if, say, if I just hit this flat straight over this and it was just completely flat, by the time I rip this all the way around, it's gonna be so bottle capped, it's not, it's, you're gonna have a mess down there. 
So what I do is I take it on this straight bar and then once I get about here, not, not right to it, but a little bit before it, I'll take my torch, heat it, and what we'll do is just kind of pre-stretch this corner and that's gonna literally make it want to like wrap this bar right here. And so it literally sucks over the bar and then all I have to do is heat it and go like this and it pretty much wraps under, it's super easy. So as long as you take that tension away by pre-stretching, it's a pretty piece of cake. So I'm gonna show you how to do that and uh, let's get started. What I'm gonna do first here is I need to lay some knifeless down right here on the back side. Um, I'm gonna try to find the most, you know, the, the most back side of this rounded bar, just so when it is like this, you know, no matter what, you can't, you're not gonna see the seam. You gotta put it right on the perfect spot. Since it is a titanium frame and it's it's got like a coating on it, on it I had to actually use um, the floor polish stuff that we always, uh, hold on, let me grab some real quick. Pow! All right. So I actually had to use some of this stuff um, on the back sides, just where I'm actually putting the seam on this bar, just because the knifeless wasn't sticking. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a really matte, matte finish, and so the knifeless was having a really hard time sticking to it, so this really helps. This, this, it's literally just a floor polish we promote it all the time. So I'm just gonna go straight over these welds, actually. So I got this knifeless laid down here. Um, kind of show you a little bit what it looks like. Just right on the back side, one little piece. Um, so what I'm gonna have to do actually is once I pull this, um, pull the material on here, I'm gonna do one side all the way to the knifeless, pull the knifeless, and then I'm gonna lay knifeless back over that piece while the other side is still just kind of hanging out. And then we're gonna overlay that knifeless and then pull that knifeless again. So it's kind of a three step process here. Um, so let's get started with this. Let's pull this whole thing. Start it right in the middle back here. So Jess is gonna hold the frame here while I stretch this over. A little bit better if you have something to actually hold the frame with, which... You got it. So we'll just kind of pre-stretch this down and over. And I wanna make sure that this is enough. Okay, so what side did I do this? I did the inside. Outside first, okay. So. So you see how it's already like sucked down? And honestly, you could probably even get a little more out of that, but I think we'll be, be okay. Um, but yeah, see how it kind of just eats the whole top of that bar there. So once you heat that, it's gonna just. So that, there you go. That, that shows you, I mean, this is a really good pre-stretch here. And then I'll go, what I do on these, um, since they're kind of all bunched up, I just take it, spread the vinyl out, pull it down on all these. You just cut, so you don't want to cut too far in because you want to stay past the weld. So right past the weld, I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna make an incision. I sound like a doctor. And then that will allow us to kind of split, split that bar there. And then what I'm gonna do Normally I would use knifeless, but I can't because the way you have to do this is you have to literally cut just a little bit at a time as you work this all the way around the bar. So it's kind of tricky. You have to be really good with your knife because obviously you don't want to just chop his chair up. So kind of takes a little skill to do, you know, custom knife work, but we can, we can get around that. I just take this, and you just gotta be really careful with where you're, where you're cutting, of course. All right, so I'm gonna leave this side kind of open, kind of flapped up, just because I'm gonna take the outside in first, and then the, the inside's gonna, gonna cover up. I believe that's how I did this side, yep. So what I'm gonna start doing is kind of just working it right around the bar, a little bit at a time right here, just to get it past the apex. This is the one I'm gonna start with because I need to get this around first and I don't wanna do this until I have this cut because if I do that and pull, 
what it's gonna do is rip this and I don't want that to happen. So I need to cut this first and get it about halfway. So I'll try to, try to do it to where I can kind of show you a little bit of heat there, get it started. So I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna literally just make sure you have a, oh, I need a blade. Fresh blade, every time when you're making cuts on a surface like this. That way, the sharper your blade, the less, pr the less pressure you have to actually apply to get the cut. So, if you have a dull blade, it's more likely you're going to cut through onto the paint because you're gonna have to push harder. When you have a sharp blade, all I have to do is barely touch the surface. So barely score the surface here. And then it should rip. If I, if I cut it deep enough, yep. Kind of just pulls apart, kind of like clear bra. The right films, if you score the surface, they usually rip really well. Now with metallics, you have to be really careful with metallics when you're doing that because they keep ripping. <laughs> they, they don't stop where your cut stops because for some reason they tear so easy. Any kind of metallic, for some reason, just the flake in it, I guess, the metal flake or whatnot, it literally just, if I were to pull on a piece like this, it would just be nothing to pull it off. So you have to be super careful with metallic films um, when you're cutting like this, since I am kind of going as I'm cutting. Very easily, easy to rip. Rip that a little farther, go a little farther. And you always wanna make sure after you make the cut to go a little farther because if you don't, it's more likely you're gonna rip it because it'll, it'll just keep ripping. So you wanna get that down farther past that. Now that I'm back behind there, I can start getting this part down. See how it kinda, that really shrunk up there. So I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna take and stretch just the very middle of this, right down and around. And it's, I'm not even really stretching that far because it's nice and warm and it actually wants to do this because of the pre-stretch. So I'm not even really forcing the material at all. It's really kind of wanting to do this. So I wanna get to my knife list there. And then I'm gonna come around right to this weld as well. I'm coming to, and so on this weld right here, I actually have knifeless going right up and over the weld. So I don't even need to worry about cutting this one because it's just gonna cut right through. So just need to get to that. I'm gonna flip this real quick because I need to see what I'm doing. So I've actually got this far enough around to where now I can take this, pull it back, let me show you. Sorry, I'm having to move around a lot. So right here, I'm able to just kind of push this through and that's gonna finish me out there. It'll have a little bit of a stretch on it. Watch the back side of the material because obviously you're gonna have a problem with it sticking. So you wanna maybe pull that back a little bit. Stuff like this takes a lot of love. You really gotta kind of just work the material around. It's not, it doesn't get there right away the first time. Need a little heat. Just wanna pull that up and around. Ooh, heat rises <laughs> right in my face. All right, so I got one more little section here. I'm gonna rip around. Like I said, this is very tedious work, so if you don't have patience, it's probably not gonna work out for you. That's like, a lot of this is just patience. You kinda have to really just take your time and small cuts. Cause if you rush stuff, if you rush stuff like this, all you're gonna do is just end up with slip cuts and, and rips and tears. All right, so I got my knife list, I got, or I got my material all the way down on my knife list on this side. So what I'm gonna do now is take a little, little heat to it. Just to get that really nice down on the knife list, make sure we're secure, and then I'm gonna pull it. 
So the good way to start your tape is when you actually have bleed, kind of like up here. I actually like starting it this way, that way you can, if you do break the material, the string or something, it's not gonna, you know, go into your wrap. So I always start a little back and what you do is just, you're gonna fold over the vinyl <laughs> with the string and then you're gonna pinch it with your thumb and your pointer finger and then pull and that pulls right out. So that's one of the easiest ways I feel to pull string. Get it started at least. And then you'll want to always stay in the same direction you're pulling because you can always slip out of the tape. The string will actually just bust right out of the tape and then you're screwed because it'll just cut all jagged and all over the place. So you really have to stay in the same direction that you're wanting to cut. And what we'll do is finish this off because it's actually a gap here. Pull off your excess. So now I gotta lay another knifeless tape right on the other side of this, probably a good eighth inch. It's not too thick. You don't want to do, you don't want to go crazy with it. And the one thing about seams is people don't see straight lines. So as long as your seams are very straight and even, even if they're not straight, as long as they're even, like a perfect eighth inch all the way down, then it looks like a normal natural body line. And it looks like it's supposed to be there. Now, if you go and you lay your knife list and it's all squiggly and jagged and everywhere, it's gonna be a lot more noticeable. Go back. Make sure you push this knifeless down because it does not hold well if you do not go back over it. So now that we have this side, I can kind of pull it back around and it's actually just kind of wanting to do that since it's, it still has that pre-stretch. So, I'll kind of show you. Maybe, can you see that? Let's <laughs> get it down past the apex like the other side. Cut your seam. Once you get it to where you need it, use the heat to really tack it down because that's really the only thing that's... When you have a lot of stress on stuff, you really want to make sure it's tacked because it's just going to want to fight you the whole time. Even if it means just like rolling it around all the way just while you work on the rest of it, or else you're going to have to keep coming back and, you know, if you have, if you have a really um, tight area that you have a lot of stretch on, you really want to make sure that's down nice with the heat. So. Pinch the bleed and pull the string. Oh no. All right, let's pull all your excess. Pull your string out. So I'll take my torch after that. Do a little post heat. I'm just gonna take, I'm gonna cut about an eighth inch up, maybe even shorter, just enough to get around the back side of this. Just a nice even, it doesn't have to be perfect because you're not gonna see it. It's just there to hold. So. What I'll do is that there's actually a slit, I'll kind of show you right here in the back. I'm actually gonna cut this up and kind of just surface cut this on both sides. Cause there's a, there's actually a thing that goes here, kind of helps it adjust. So. Just like that. You end up with that. 
nice and clean, nice and clean. You also have, so on this side, and you see the seam on there. You can see it in there. Nice and clean, straight, all the way down. Um, and around these are nice and clean. So now on this bar, when we take this around, what I'll do is this bar is going to overlap the seam just to the outside of the weld. And so that way it completely disappears. What did you expect now? That you feel better? I download simple lies. What did cut you down? What do you regret now? Thinking you were Um, so thank you guys so much for watching today. If you want to see all the finished projects here, check out our Instagram and Facebook. That's going to be Vina Vixen Raps and Rap Sesh AZ. Um, and then make sure to check out our Twitch channel, which is a live streaming platform. If you guys are interested in getting training and things like that from us, this is a really good way to interact with us. We do live um, tutorial like rap sessions. So you see everything real time happening. You can also ask questions and things like that. And the coolest part is, um, after the episode airs live, you can always go back and watch it later if you're not available. Um, and that's going to be at twitch.tv slash rap sesh. Uh, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you dig the rap sesh vibe. We'd love to see you here on a regular basis on YouTube. And uh, we'll see you guys next she week. She didn't even dance. Get down. I dance. Disappear! Oh. Disappear! Oh.